staying on. You know who for I as long as he wants to. You know who I wouldn't want to play at Grand Prix New Jersey when they're playing Infect? Tom. Him next week. And the worst part is, is when you sit down across from him, you know exactly what he's playing. That's horrifying. It's here's a flavored Oplite. We are underway here. Can everyone want a round five from Columbus? It's a Temple of Abandon. And I imagine right now Tom is doing a little fist pump in his head. Yes. Oh, a green strategy, huh? Although that temple is a little deceptive. It is green splash black. Yeah. Temple of Enlightenment here. A couple straight temples, because why not? And then the one Zenikos. We'll see where this card's going to go. Bottoms up. An attack for one. See if Ross has a follow up here at all. He will just pass the turn back over to Bowen. Bowen has, looks like an untapped land. It'll be a copy of Lano or Waste. I'll we'll follow up here with a Voyaging Sabre before passing the turn back over to Ross, who will untap and take a draw step here. But so far, this bodes really well for Tom. Most of these decks that open up like this, I mean, may, I guess this could be a Jund opening, but it's most likely some sort of Devotion Shell, given what's going on in Standard. And most of these decks just don't come packed with that much removal. Ordeal of Thassa will come down on favorite hop light. Heroic Trigger will give it one counter. The attack will give it another. So it's an attack there for three. Bones down to 16. Ross, of course, already qualified for our Players' Championship two times over. So we will see him December 20th and the 21st in Roanoke, Virginia. Two times over. Yep. <laughs> if we can clone him, Reed Duke's out of luck. Yep. Bowen with his third land here is a forest from? That is Urza Saga. Correct. I actually knew that one. Tom looks like he got his lands from the draft box. Gotta keep cheap. He's gotta he's gotta step his basic land game up a little I bit. So I think everything's working out just fine for Tom. Why, <laughs> why change anything? Yeah, I guess that's true. There's a courser. Take a look at the top card. Genesis Hydra. We're going back Ross's way. Ross will draw a card. Looks like a copy of Defiant Strike added to the grip. This is a Stratus Walk. We're going in the skies, baby. Burp, 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 burp. <laughs> we'll draw a card. Shadows Walk's going to give him flying. Now here is a Defiant Strike. If you guys aren't familiar with that one, you probably were last week. From Ivan Chen making this card. Looks just like a random piece of garbage into a constructed playable. And with the Genesis Hydra getting revealed there, Tom now knows it's some sort of Nykthos shell. Yep. And he can be very aggressive about loading up enchantments because it's unlikely Nicholas has any removal in his deck if he, if he even does it all. And one thing you know about these Nikto shells with Genesis Hydra, you see the colors of mana that are in play and Elvish Mystic on top of the deck, they are so soft against flyers. It's true. That's why you see them go to Arbor Colossus so frequently. There's, I mean, Arbor Colossus is a powerful magic card. It's not like it's a huge cost to put that thing in your deck, but it is about shoring up the air. You think about that. I mean, it does short the air very well. It's a five-minute answer to a flying creature. Though. That's expensive. Well, it's a five-minute answer to every flying creature. <laughs> <laughs> That's fair. Yeah. That's fair. But I wouldn't be surprised, and this is where a lot of people take advantage of this deck, is in the skies, if we do see players start to move towards Windstorm-esque effects, even though Windstorm would be more pricey than Arbor Colossus right now. Yeah. So there is that. Bowen going to pass the turn back about the land. Ross going to draw a card. You see he's got a Flooded Strand over there. He's going to put that into play. This is a bunch of mana. What is this going to be? Oh, I, I had a lot of countless battles. Trigger Heroic. Let's see if this is going to resolve. And I believe this is lethal if this sticks. It's large. It is in charge. Here's some mana. It's a hero's downfall. Oh. Does Tom have a God's Willing? Well, he can't sacrifice that fetch line fast enough, so I have a feeling that he does. Obviously he does. Why wouldn't he? Deck even has a main deck hero's downfalls, Think. and Tom still just kills him on turn five. Can't forget that God Willing is going to trigger Heroic there. Right, that's another point. By so. the by. Tom Ross going to win game number one here over Nicholas Bowen. Blue Eyed Heroic up a game over Green Black Devotion as we will take a look at the sideboard here. We will start with Bowen, which you have in front of you. A Hornet Queen, a Bioblight, four Thought Seas, two Reclamation Sage, four Nightlead's Disciple, three Nissa World Waker. Uh, I like getting the Bioblight in the deck. I like the two Reclamation Sages blowing up some enchantments. I think the Nissas might be okay. They're a little slow in the matchup, but generating some colorless blockers is nice against a deck that's packing God's Bully. On Ross's side, he's got two Treasure Crews, and then an extension of his main deck here, which is something we saw with Brad Nelson as well. Two copies of a race, an additional Heliod's Pilgrim, an additional Ordeal of Heliod, two Laguna Band Elder. 
aqueous form, three stubborn denials, a secret of the way of the two copies of Johnny's presence. When I say an extension of the main deck, you're going to find a lot of these cards in his main deck, like the Heliod's Pilgrim. He's got three of those. He's got a seeker of the way in his board to go on three in his main deck. So, you know, decks, I think people kind of oftentimes forget this. There's 75 cards, not 60. Yeah, and there's some people have just high impact stuff in their sideboard, which is a fine way to approach it. Some decks like this, there's a little bit of hedging going on, or because you have something like Kilian's Pilgrim, you have some one ofs. Some matchups you want to turn those into two ofs because yep. you're happy to just draw them. So there's a lot of different ways to approaching sideboards and how you construct them. Uh, Tom does have an idea, I think, that he's against a devotion strategy, though it's an unorthodox one. Since we did see Heroes Downfall, we don't see that a lot. So I, uh, I, I expect the Aqueous form actually come in, just because being unblockable is really good against a deck that doesn't come up the ground because he won't always have the Stratus Walk to put him in the skies. Wouldn't be surprised to see a card like Stubborn Denial as well. Yep. Some decent options here, but I think part of the reason that Tom is playing this deck is because he's so good against these type of strategies that he doesn't have to change very much. Well, the other thing to keep in mind here is, you know, the Genesis Hydra to me is a bit of a giveaway that... Nicholas has to be some sort of Korean devotion shell. But Tom can't be 100% sure. Let's go back and look at the cards that he saw. He saw some mana creatures. He saw a Temple of Abandon, a Hero's Downfall, a Courser. There's no certainty that he's playing against a Korean devotion. I mean, it's most likely, again, because of the Genesis Hydra, but by no means a lock. So uh, Tom might approach the sideboarding in this matchup very differently. Well, these players will finish sideboarding, and as they do, we will talk about our furry friend, the last member of the Squirrel Creature Collection series, at least for now, Squirrel Confidant. And just like all the other Squirrel series items that we have available, while they are the most recent thing, you get two of these free with every Legacy Open entry. And if you're interested in the playmat, deck, deck box, dice bag, sleeves, you can get that on our website over at starcitygames.com or head over to any dealer booth at an open series or Grand Prix that Star City Games is running. Available now at starcitygames.com. Heck, you can get them at Grand Prix New Jersey next weekend, too. Though, I have a feeling players might be playing with those Brainstorm sleeves instead. I think so, too. So, Patrick, an interesting question for you before we do start game number two. I was asked on Twitter, watching you on Star City Games, I noticed you had an A in your Twitter handle. What does the A stand for? So, before I answer that, there are some people who have like, you know, the middle initial or a name. I'm thinking of a gentleman by the name of CM Punk who will not tell people what the initials stand for. Mm -hmm. How do you feel about considering that information while making it part of your name? Uh, I think I can take it or leave it. I feel like you would have strong, like what, what is your middle initial? Don't tell me your middle name. B. So if your Twitter handle was Patrick B. Sullivan. Yeah. And someone asked you what the B would stand for, would you tell them? Yeah, sure. Okay. It's not, uh, I, my, my middle name is Brian. I don't particularly care that people know this or not. So okay. I would be happy to reveal it. I'm always careful with the letter B, though, because it looks like you might be trying to say, like, the word B-E. Oh, okay. So I, I okay. rarely throw it out there. Ah. But Patrick, I'm not opposed to I it. like that Patrick B. Sullivan. Exactly. I see. see. I see. Okay. No, it's, it's just... Hey, you've exactly. thought this through, much like Coco Beware. The, the bird man. Wrestler. Right. Yes. Correct. Hall of Famer. His finishing move, I believe, was a drop kick. I think, he had a, I think it was a spine buster. Wow, it's powerful. Yep. That is really, really We'll nice. go to the tape. The A for the record. The A for the record is is for Alan. Okay, it's for Alan. Nothing special about my middle name either. It's uh, is that your your father's name or my father's name is Curtis. Okay, Curtis Phillips. Nothing special about my middle name. I don't even know why I have it. Okay, no, it's not great. I don't like it's how it's spelled. Anything about it really? I was I was raised in a Roman Catholic family, so Patrick and Brian are both names of saints. Mm. That's how I got my name. Mm. That's the naming convention. <laughs> <laughs> Fun little story. Elvis Mystic here. A favorite half light there. So both players with one mana spells to get the ball rolling in game number two. Another copy of Lanor Waste and just passing the turn back over to Ross, who will draw a card. You see an island in his hand. Picked up a copy of Heliot's Pilgrim. Or at least this is what I was told. I don't know if this is a joke or not. I have a feeling the story is probably true. I don't think that you are living a lie. I hope you aren't. How about that instead? Doesn't really matter to me at this point. <laughs> It is what it is. Whatever the origins <laughs> are, it doesn't really matter at this point. Here's a Tranquil Cove. We're also going to go up a little bit higher. That is a favorite hoplite and passing the turn. This is a reason that I, I love Tom. This is a subtle play. A lot of people don't catch this. Right now, his hand is kind of in the spot where he doesn't know what he particularly needs, even lands or spells. It's not super clear what he wants to draw at this point. So instead of playing his scry land when his, the value of his draw steps are pretty flat, he plays his Tranquil Cove to save the scry land down the line for when he has a better idea what he wants to draw. Most people just, without even thinking, just play the scry land. There's an island. Perhaps it's time for Heliod's Pilgrim. It is. We're going searching. Patrick, some feel as though 
P.B. Sullivan would be a good rap name for you, given your rap game. Sure. I think you should just call you PBS. TV station. Oh, I have have not. I have never heard that before. You could get sued. It would be perfect. Yep. There's always there's already the red box thing. I mean, that's a lawsuit waiting to happen. Ooh, that's true. I like that. We gotta keep. You gotta stay low. Yeah, yeah. I gotta keep key. a low, low profile. Low key. I might have to ghost off of social media soon enough because <laughs> there's already a risk of you know things getting blown up. It's a fourth Lanamore waste. Gonna fight that guy? Come on in here. Lucro's feeling a little frisky. Well, I, I like Nicholas trying to take an aggressive line of play here. But this is the type of game, you know, if you're going to say, all right, Pluker knows I'm attacking, and in three turns I got lethal. With Tom having the board that he has, I think he's happy to play that game. I mean, you got to try to get him dead. I, I like Nicholas taking this line. His hand is what it is, but I, I think Tom can win this sort of game. Well, Dio Thasso is what Tom searched up. Looks like he just drew another copy, too. So Tom is already under the gun. He's got to get moving here. Correct. But you can see how much better a Scryland is at this stage of the game than it would have been earlier on. Got a better idea of what he's looking for. And trigger Heroic after playing the ordeal of Thassa on the favorite Hoplite. Got Battlewise Hoplite over there as well. Looks like he's going to come into the red zone here. We'll counter there. So we attack here for three on Bowen. Life totals are even, it looks to be. And so here's a Temple. But I'm not sure the game is even as Tom's going to scry. Put that top card to the bottom. Pass the turn back over to Bone, who will quickly untap all four copies of Llanowar Waste and draw a card. Weird hand. To say the least. There's some manic influence. Ah, sure. Yes. Even a little, <laughs> a little more painful. Why not? Ah, these points of damage probably don't matter that much. <laughs> yeah, that's it. <laughs> that's it, yeah. Oh, no. Wait, sorry. I'm sorry. I meant they matter a ton. I think we have one incoming. Yes, yeah, Elvish Mystic joining the party. Bowen will have to take one to cast it. And it seems like almost everything else. He's tapping some mana now. That's Nylea. Doesn't have to take any to cast that. Nice. Ha-ha! And now the chump blocking plan that Ross may have had is now off of the table. As Pelucanos gets trampled. Of course, Nylea does not. Grants everything else trampled, though. Though we should note that Nylea is on Devotion is 5. It's a big swing here for Nicholas. Really good turn. I mean, he needs to threaten more damage here. Tom's deck can produce chump blockers. I mean, random 1-1s one and 1-2s one along the way. So giving trample to his team here, very valuable. Here's a God's Willing. Take a look. Top card going to the bottom. Looks like maybe a little bit of blocking here. Just save some damage. Yeah. And a concession to mana efficiency now that Tom is very much under the gun. I mean, likely to die next turn. Looks like he may have picked, a cop picked up a copy of Stratus Walk. Let's see if Tom can finagle his way out of this situation. Well, I know he can cast two enchantments, so that's plus two, gets him to four, plus attack trigger is five, plus the ordeals is six, seven. But Nicholas is at 13, so that's not going to get it done. And Tom is only at nine. There are some big creatures on the other side of the table. Yeah, Tom is going to get mushed next turn, so. That's a technical turn. It is. Precise. Mushed. He's going to get mushed. Stratus walk. Trigger. Draw one. Feet of resistance is what he found. Off the cantrip. It's an attack. Trigger and trigger. Two cards coming for the boss. Let's see what he's able to put together on this turn. An unsummon esque effect would be brutal. It'd be really sweet. I don't think he really has any of that to bring to the table here. No devouring lights, nothing to play to the board. And that's kind of the nature of this deck. I mean, it, it's, it's creatures and creature enchantments and lands, so it doesn't leave a lot of room for much else. It is very straightforward in what it does. And if what it does is good, the deck is very good. And if what it does the opponent is prepared for, I can't imagine it's very good at all. But... It's been good so far. Ross is sitting at 4-0, and, oh, and he's currently up a game, though Bowen is looking to even things up here with maybe just an attack this turn. Well, if he chump blocks the Nylea and puts something in front of Pelucranos, it's exactly... I, I think Nicholas may have been able to just attack and hope. See here in a moment. Okay, this is a safer route. 
a little bit of life gain, eh? Because I think, I think Nicholas could have just jammed and gotten the kill if Tom has nothing. This is slightly safer. Yeah, I like this. I mean, Nicholas' disciple is going to get him a bunch of life. He's going to go up to 15. Now he gets to attack with these big creatures. Pelucranos, of course, has trample. Nylea does not, but Nylea's trample is... I mean, Nylea's devotion is not going to get turned off here. Yeah, and this is a lethal attack. It forces some response out of Tom. Yep. Here's some blocks. You see Tom does have a copy of God's Willing in the grip. He will cast that on the Battlewise Hoplite. Now it's going to get a little bit bigger, and there will be some scry action here as well. The Hoplite will let you do that, as will the God's Willing. So top guard to the bottom. Scry from the God's Willing. Where are you going? Ah, uh, this one. He needs to think about a little bit more. <laughs> That's going to go to the bottom as well. Now, of course, he leads Pilgrim. Well, that's gone. A little trample damage there. Ross will take four, I believe, go down to five. And he will untap. It's time to draw. Can he deal 15 is the question. The draw was a copy of Heliot's Pilgrim. So a, a Pilgrim can go get an Aqueous Form, which can go on to the Battlewise Hoplet. So that's four points of damage there plus nine, so it's still, he's still pretty far away. Ross gonna go reaching for mana, slow down a little bit. And I don't think singing bell strike gives him another turn, because there's just too much mana and power in play. Yeah, I think the only thing that could happen here is, you know, if he gets a bell strike and hoping that Nicholas does make a mistake, though he is, Playing and searching. Uh -oh. oh! Never mind. Well, what a surprise. <laughs> He's already ready for this. I was not anticipating him bringing in Ordeal of Heliod against a deck that looked like it could have been Jund. Well, he does have one of those in his main deck, and he does have another one in his sideboard. So there is a world that exists where he just said, I'm just going to leave this one Just in. the one. Yeah, sure. That said, Ordeal of Heliod, game 10. Ever heard of it? It's a... <laughs> make it 11. <laughs> oh, absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. Nice little turn there. He's at 15. Hey, tie game. Yep. Not really. He, Bowen's going to go down to eight. But Tom is actually keeping his head above water now all of a sudden. And now it's actually on Bowen to figure something out. Ten lives a lot of life. Just a, another example of Houdini getting out of the, <laughs> the trap door yet again. And now there's some chump blockers back on defense. Again, Nidalea, the devotion has been satisfied. We know that, but it doesn't trample. So Bone's going to have to have something nice this turn. That's sneaky, Tom Ross. I know. And we can circle back to last turn where Nicholas had the option of shove and lose to anything or play it safe and play the Nidalea's Disciple. This looked really safe. It turns out this might have been not as safe as Nicholas thought because mm -hmm. Tom's powering through. I'm trying to figure out, okay, here are your creatures. You've got a 3-3 three, three Battlewise Hoplite. You have a 1-3 Heliots Pilgrim. All right, that's fine. You have one card in your hand, but you're tapped out, so I don't have to worry about that. I don't even have to worry about Devouring Light either because he's only got two creatures back on. Bone's got some pretty pretty big green creatures out there. Most of them have Trample besides Nylea, though its devotion has been met, but... How can he force the necessary points of damage? Let's also keep in mind, too, he probably doesn't want to deal himself too much damage to his lands anymore. Well, he's, it's boom or bust here. If, if Tom has any way to target a creature next turn, it's just lethal. So if there's no way to gain life here... There's a Corsair. The top card is going to reveal it as a Bile Blight. Here's some mana. Oh! All right. right back in Tom's face. It's not Leah's Disciple, so 2, 4, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12... He's up to 19. Okay. And now we are attacking. Look at the back and forth here. Looks like Bowen's just going to send him with the two big dummies. See how Ross wants to block if he wants to block at all. It's not a lethal attack. No, I, I think Nicholas would have been better served by just attacking as the first order business because maybe blocks go differently. Okay. Don't give up that information. Well, he's empty-handed empty now, Tom, too. Tom may have had a chump block or, or evaluated certain things differently. Now all the information's face up on what he has to beat. Tom's going to take seven. He's down eight. He's going to untap. He's got to deal 19 points of damage now. He was very close last turn. 
Cluthy or Deal Field Ad will take it down, but both players gaining a lot of life this game. Now, Leo's Disciple a little bit better than I thought it may be in this matchup. I did not think it was going to come down to quite this sort of damage race, but Nylea has blown up this whole game. This is true. I think Tom definitely had the tools to chump block and navigate the race otherwise, but trample on the Pelucanos is causing a lot of trouble. Ordeal of Thassa will allow a little scry action here. Take a look at the top card immediately to the bottom. No interest in whatever the heck that was. You can see Ross's deck. It can win a game when it goes this long, but it doesn't want to go this long. No, I think turn five is, like what we saw in the first game, is more what he's gunning for. He's got crafty ways to you know, get those last points of damage through. Aquius' form, Stratus Walk, what you see in play. You see Ordeal Thoss is going to break here. He's got two cards coming. Feet of Resistance and Gob's willing to push through damage. He actually just drew a copy of Aquius' form. Wow, here's a Defiant Strike it looks like he drew. This might be all before blockers, potentially. Yep. Feet of Resistance, bigger. It gets a counter from Heroic and a counter from the Feet. What's going on? Uh, Defiant Strike? you got to be kidding me. A counter, and then it gets plus one, plus one from that. He draws from Defiant Strike. So this is 6, 12, 13, 14. Th I count 15, I believe. That's my math is off. Yeah, they're doing a little price check here. Yeah. How much damage are you dealing me this turn? And now there's a favorite hoplite. Pass the turn back. Tom with just one mana available. Who's oh, the top card? Copy an Ilea. That one doesn't help very much. Bowen's going to just quickly untap Trawl and get in with everything. <laughs> and says, would you just die already? Yeah. And Tom Ross finally does. So Nicholas Bowen is going to win game number two. Green Black Devotion and Blue White Heroic headed to a third game. Don't think against Tom. Just... Just push them all in and hope that's good enough. Yeah, just get them dead. Don't at least try to. Don't get trapped any further. Both players going to go back to the sideboard here in just a moment. And while we, while they do that, excuse me, we will talk about Cardboard Crack, the sweet web, web comic for Magic. Yeah, everyone's favorite black and white stick figure Magic the Gathering web comic is now available on, in book form at starcitygames.com slash cardboard crack. Looking to purchase it or find more information on sale now for $12.99 a piece. We have two books available. So if you are a fan of this web comic, which many in the community are, make sure to head over to Starcity Games right now. Pick up your copies. One of my favorites. I follow them on Twitter. They get my Twitter endorsement, which should not mean very much to you at home, but they have it. Sure. So there you go. It's, it's big praise. You get to work on your Twitter. You get to follow them. That's an order. Eh. Now I'm doing. Now I'm not doing it to be obstinate. You poked and prodded too many times, and now I just want to dig in my heels because that's the thing that I do sometimes. Is that called being like a hipster, or uh, what is that called? Contrarian, I guess maybe is more what you're looking for. Okay. But a uh, child. We can also <laughs> that, also child will play. I suppose that does work. Yeah. Uh, Falcon Falcon Loren, and if I said that wrong, I do apologize on Twitter. Letting us know that Coco Beware's finisher was called, you guessed it, the Bird Buster. Yep. It was the Bird Buster. Yeah. I've been digging through the Superstars of Wrestling archives so, last, in my spare time. So I've heard. It is, it is tough to watch, but I do love nostalgia. It's part of the reason that I'm so excited about Grand Prix, New Jersey. Of course. So close to my hometown, and the first... You know, the first cards I opened up, the first booster packs I purchased were revised, and so dual lands and, you know, revised Birds of Paradise and Lightning Bolts and all that kind of stuff are were part of my middle school years. So it's been definitely, as we get closer to the event, I can feel the, the heartstrings being pulled about the way that magic was once upon a time for me. I'm looking forward to Saturday morning of the event, round one, and we take a look at the crowd and see likely... 46, 47, 5,000 players, all making a lot of noise during the players' meeting. And then after Jared Silver, whoever the head judge with the microphone says, round one, you have 50 minutes, round one begins, the hush. Yep. Because it's incredible that that many thousands of people can be that quiet. Just the sounds of fetch lands and ponders causing people to shovel their decks. It's one of my favorite parts of a large tournament. They can be so loud and then they can be so quiet, deep yep. in thought. It's 
what makes it such a great game. The boss sitting here at 4-0, headed to game number three. Against Nicholas Bowen, trying to play the role spoiler of Green Black Devotion. Small splash of red in his deck for Xenagos, but by and large, he has a Green Black deck, Doomwake Giants, and Heroes Downfalls, and all that jazz. Only two copies of Eidolon of Blossoms, interestingly enough. Yeah, we've seen some players, I think, move away from that in response to the Jeskai Ascendancy deck. Yeah, I think you can expect more enchantment removal, probably. Well, there are two main deck copies of Heroes Downfall, though I suppose in other lists that can be Bob Light or Murderous Cut. But yeah. Making a concession here to the matchup to some extent by having some main deck spot removal. Though we saw in game one against Tom, that wasn't enough because God's Willing just swatted that aside and route to Tom winning the game on turn five. It's hard to say how good of a Murderous Cut deck this is. Probably not a great one. No, so it's not. I, I, I mean, I was seriously impressed by Murderous Cut last week. Like, seriously, this is a one mana removal spell that's completely absurd. And most of the removal spells in the format come with some sort of condition attached. We were talking about the Last Breath, Reprisal, Bile Blight. All these cards work against certain things and not others. Murderous Cut is really the only throwback we have to, you know, catch all besides Hero's Downfall and I suppose Utter End, although that's much less efficient in most spots than Murderous Cut. The player's going to take a look at the grip. We'll see if either one does decide to send it back. You can see in Ross's hand, he has his copy of Manic Influence among other options. Fairly land heavy, it looks like. Yep. At least three. Might be a three land, four spell hand. But he does have the option to go first. He will take it, it's a flooded strand. We're underway in game number three here, round five. Bone will draw a card. We'll see what his first land of the game is. It's a copy of Temple of Malady. So, a little scry action. That's going to stay on the top. We go back to Ross's way. Ross is going to sacrifice a fetch and go down to 19. Yeah, just looking for action at this point. He's got plenty of mana in hand. And there's no synergies with the Flooded Strand in this deck. Shuffling's not doing anything for him. It's just a mana fixer. So if he's a little land heavy right now, he should be thinning out. An island is what he's going to search up. Ross will draw. Copy of Aquilas' form and no creature to play. Maybe that's why he was thinking so long about his hand. Well, he has a Heliod's Pilgrim and the man that cast it, so it's a slow hand, but probably good enough to keep. Voyaging Seder are going to come down here. Ross going to draw a card. It's an island. There's a plains. There is the Pilgrim, so it's time to go searching. What are you searching for? We're going to find out in just a moment. It's our deal of Thassa. I wouldn't be surprised if that's his go-to search target a lot. Definitely powerful, although without the heroic creatures in play, it's going to be a lot slower if he has to go through Heliod's Pilgrim. Bowen's going to draw a card. See if he can ramp in anything. There's third land. It's Nurborg. This is a copy of Pelucranos. One of the more problematic cards for this blue-white heroic deck, at least that we've seen thus far. Defiant Strike. The draw here for Ross. Looks like he might be... In some real trouble here. The draw has not really come together all that well. Though, to be fair, this rogue deck is not one that mulligans all that great. No, it does not. Colored mana is an issue, and having the right mix of creatures and stuff to put on creatures, it's asking a lot. Well, one thing we know about Pelucranos, he can close the game out very quickly. So Ross is going to have to get a move on here. And now Tom's in this awkward spot where he can say, I don't think he has God's Willing in his hand, so he can, for example, play Ordeal, Thassa, and Aqueous form. This is another alternative. This allows him to attack through the Pelucranos if he wants to, without having to be shields down on Feet of Resistance. But this is very slow. I mean, yeah. he's not attacking for very much damage here. It's just a boring attack for one, and now there's a copy of Hero Iros, and just kind of pass the turn back. So actually, you can notice that Ross is hoping that his opponent doesn't have a land. Well, or he just has to make his way through this Pelucranos at some point to be able to start deploying his enchantments. That's the other factor here, too. It does get interesting, though, if there is no land here for Bone. It doesn't look like there is. So Ross is going to take five because, obviously, he wants to be able to go crazy on this creature. You know, yeah. That's the big plan here. Let's see what this is going to be. And to be able to do it with Feet of Resistance up because then Nicholas is really going to struggle to get anything off the board. Yep. Sylvan Carry is going to come down. Bowen going to now play another Voyaging Seder and pass the turn back. So the green light is on as Ross is quickly going to untap those four lands, the Pilgrim, and draw a card. A Plains is what he's found. He's drawing a few too many lands this game, it seems. Still a sigh of relief here for, if you're on Tom's side of the table, to, 
you know, get to untap with both of your creatures in play and feet of resistance in hand. Don't forget all the auras. They cost one less now. So can he make the hero really large? You see Tom a little bit frustrated with the composition of his hand. Has not played land yet. Also wants this, most likely wants to try to figure out a way to make this ordeal of Thassa fire off this turn so we can find more action. Counter. Thassa's ordeal is in play. He does have a copy of Feet of Resistance in hand. It's a little bit awkward right now, though. There is Aquaeus' form. So there's a second counter. Hero's a 4-4 now. And now he gets to attack. It's unblocked. Mm -hmm. Gets to draw two cards. And still Feet of Resistance through all of this. Oh, we're racing. Yeah. We are racing. Trigger, trigger. So looks like he may scry first. He will. He can stack those triggers any way that he'd like. Yeah, they, those are both essentially when this creature attacks trigger. So he can scry and then draw or vice versa. That card's going to stay on top. There goes the ordeal of Thassa. Ross is going to draw two cards. He knows one of them. He was happy to keep one of them. God's willing among the cards in his hand now. God's willing plus feet of resistance is a ton of protection. Yep. Does he have the time? Does Bowen have any interest in blocking on this turn, or is he going to try to wait for future turns? Well, he has no blocks this turn. I mean, one oh, creature yeah, is flying and one creature is yep. unblockable, so it's just an issue of how much does Tom want to push. There's Manic Influence. He's going to play Battlewise Hoplite and just pass the turn back. So Tom rebuilding his board very quickly. All stemmed from that turn where Hero Rose made it out alive. And you can see how colored mana sensitive this deck is. Even on turn five, it was important that Tom have a Mana Confluence instead of, say, another Plains because he needed three different blue sources of mana. Also why Flooded Strand is such a big printing for this deck because, again, colored mana is a challenge. Temple of Abandon here for Bowen. Take a look at the top card. That is going to stay on top. And I think Nicholas is going to be on a lot of trouble here if he ever makes a move with the Pulgrinos because Tom has efficient ways to blow that up. Tom is just going to take the damage. Five more. He's down to eight. This is a little bit of mana. That is an Aliyah's Disciple. This was very important last game. It's quite good this one, too. Two, four, five, six, seven. Bowen's back up to 19. Ross looking at a hand with God's Willing, with Defiant Strike, and with Feet of Resistance. And now Tom has to figure out his... Does he need to start firing off some of these spells and turn to be as efficient as possible? Stuff I imagine he doesn't want to do. Yeah. It doesn't look like he's going to, so Ross will draw a card. It's another land, a copy of Flooded Strand. 22 lands in this heroic deck. He's seen quite a few of them in this particular game. We'll see if he can overcome that. My latest disciple has been really impressive. All this has to do with the fact that Tom does not interact with his opponent's board. Mm -hmm. It just builds up. He's trying to ignore it by flying over, making things unblockable, but Nylea's Disciple has represented a full turn of damage in many of these spots. Defiant Strike. We'll draw Tom a card's copy of Heliot's Pilgrim. Interesting stuff. We can see gain 10 mode again here. Oh, yeah. And that would not be such a bad spot to be in. And he can do it and leave up God's Willing because he gets, the, he gets to play the ordeal on the cheap. Yep. Because of the hero. Heliot's Pilgrim is a card that Tom felt very strongly about in this deck, said it was underplayed. It's a way to tie the room together, let you cheat on, you know, the number of auras that you have to play. You get to play some tutors, like a one of Stratus Walk, like a one of Aquius's form. Aquius form is so good in this deck that yeah. you want to play a ton of them, and Heliot's Pilgrim allows you to do that. It's also just another source of something you can put enchantments on. I know that's not the ideal, although you just see a Heliot's Pilgrim with an enchantment on it from earlier. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, it's nicer than having to just play more enchantments and maybe get draws where you can't go anywhere. Or do you have Heliot does come in? Trigger, yes, yes. Gain 10 life up to 18. He hasn't scryed just yet. 
he will now take a look at the top card very quickly going to the bottom so a lot of damage coming through one from the heliots pilgrim six seven eight this looks like nine total all of a sudden, Bowen might be facing lethal next turn as he quickly untaps and draws a card. Ross actually has a nice amount of chump blockers back too right now. Exactly, and no night Leah from, from Nicholas, so the chump blockers are good to go. And again, doing all this with God's willing still left over. And all Tom is doing is hoping that at some point Nicholas makes a move here, commits his entire turn dumping mana into Pelucranos, and then God's willing is too big of a tempo swing. He's been holding it up. The entire game, or at least trying, between that and Feet of Resistance. And these protection spells so important in this deck. Yep. I mean, when you're, your opponent's spending three mana on Heroes Downfall, or four mana on Utter End, or five, six, seven mana dumping into Pelucranos, and you're answering that for one mana, it's a huge swing. Another Nightly Disciple. Looks a lot like the previous game. Two, four, six, seven, eight, nine life. Big, big draws here from Bowen. Bowen also with a court of calling in hand. Oh boy. A card that we have not seen a lot of since it's printing. Players yep. have tried. So you have to imagine that it's not on a lot of people's radar this weekend. Though Todd, I believe, was playing three copies in his list. Uh, yes. Yeah, so if Tom and Todd have been playing matches together, it may be on Tom's radar. Disciple going to come into the red zone. Tom can't block fast enough. He will lose his battle wise hot plate to get that off the table. Five damage will come through from Pelucranos. Ross got untapped. Still in a pretty good board position, but these players are slogging it out. Let's see what the draw is. I believe it was another copy of Hero Viroas. And the worst case scenario for this court is, is another Knight Leah's Disciple. Yep. The problem is he can't really go get a blocker because that doesn't answer the hero. And it's pretty anemic to go get a Reclamation Sage to try to blow up the Aqueous form. So another big attack. And the draw actually was a copy of Favorite Hoplite. And now Ross will just pass the turn back with those protection spells at the ready. Bowen will draw a card. Looks like he has found a land. Land of War Waste, his favorite one. Yep. Four of those last game, two this one. He wants to take a look at Aqua's form. See, make sure he knows exactly what that does. It's causing a headache. That's for sure. It's a pretty good one. Getting to set up your deck. Creatures unblockable. And then the plan here is for, for Nicholas to go, okay, go ahead. I'm going to cord for Reclamation Sage blow up your aqueous form and make a move to block, then God's willing slash feeder resistance just kills Nicholas. Yep. Trying to trap him, but he might be the one that's getting trapped. Exactly. And he has to go get a blocker. That's the thing. Or sorry, he has to give himself the ability to block, mm -hmm. whether it's a removal spell or something that blows up the aqueous form. A lot of really powerful components on Nicholas's side of the table, but Tom might have just enough trickery to get out of it. He's a reaching. Looks like he's attacking. And Tom cannot block fast enough with that Heliots Pilgrim. As this game, Pelucranos is not trampled. The last one it did. So three damage is going to come across. Ross is down to 10. You can see Nylee over there in Bowen's hand, but he also has that Court of Calling. So Ross is going to untap. He's drawing a card. Looks like it's another land. And he is attacking here for what looks to be lethal. Trigger. It's an attack for six, seven, eight. He's reaching for quarter calling mana. And it looks like X Patrick will be four in this instance. So perhaps get, just getting another Knight Leah's Disciple. which is safer than going to get a Reclamation Sage if you assume Tom has some sort of protection effect. Now, let's not forget, if you do it for four, you can do four or less. So sure. while he does pick up the deck, he may change his mind. Seeing as though I think he would like to leave stuff back to block if he could, I would imagine he's not 
getting too funky here. Probably not getting a Reclamation Sage. There's a Disciple. Two, four, six, seven, eight, nine again. Trying to hold on. Nicholas could really use a Nykthos. That would be very helpful right now. Because he has Nylea in hand. So some damage dealt, life gained. And Bone is trying to figure out how do I get these last points of damage through. Well, now he's reaching. This might be the Nylea that we saw last game. He's had it in his hand for a little while. Providing trample this game, not as good as the previous one though. Still might it still might muster an, a lethal attack though. Because if Tom could just chump block the Pelucranos, then eight points of damage comes across. There is Nylea. Now, Tom still may be able to survive the trample, but it gets hairier than it would be otherwise, where Tom could easily jump block out of this turn. And there is enough mana there for Bowen to actually activate the Pelucranos. Or, excuse me, the Pelucranos and, more importantly, Nylea with the plus two, plus two. So yep. there's enough mana to do that. So right now we're looking at five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Looks like an attack for 13 if you include like all, all the attackers plus the pump. And 13 minus two is 11. And here's an Elvish Mystic. Looks like it's going to be cast. That but may have been a bit of a misstep, actually. And Ilya can't attack. But I think that Feet of Resistance allows Tom to get out of this turn. I do, too. Because it's plus two on the trample damage yep. absorbed. One from the counter from Feet, plus a heroic trigger. Of course, Ross has to do some amount of blocking here. Going to go reach him. Looks like it might be time for Feet. You see Tom using the Flood Strand for mana there as there is an Orborg in play. There is Feet of Resistance. Plus one, plus one. Also a Road Trigger, another plus one, plus one. And it gains protection from the color of your choice on a turn, likely choosing green. Yep. So this gets it up to four toughness, which means Pelucanos tramples over for one, then Six from the Nylea's Disciples, plus two from the Voyaging Satyrs is nine. Nine's not ten, is it? It is a point short. Mm. Somehow, someway, nine is still not ten. Tom winning the game at game three at one, facing against vastly superior resources is pretty much perfect. Yeah, and that looks like is going to do it. I believe that Tom, the boss, Ross, is going to win this match over Nicholas Bowen. Two games to one. Blue Eyed Heroic takes down Green Black Devotion for the boss. As we said at the top, it's business as usual. He loves a linear aggressive deck, and he's really good at playing them. It's perfect, too, because God's willing, that's not enough there. Has to be either a second trick or feet of resistance. Yeah. Perfect. Uh, the